Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench. This is Dan here as always, and in this video we're going to be weathering an LPG tank car. Um, this is the new model from Atherin Genesis that I got. Uh, these are actually pretty rare and I'm uh, happy to get some of these, but basically in this video I'm going to be showing you some prototype weathering where I show you the pictures of the car to give you an idea of what I'm trying to uh, basically create, and then I'll go and show you what I need to do, and then we'll go ahead and we'll actually weather the car uh, step by step. So um, I've done a few things on this particular model already to save some time, and we'll go ahead and get that into that in just a second, but uh, for the most part we'll go ahead and get right into this. So take a look at this model here. This is an Atherin Genesis uh, 33K uh, LPG tank car used for liquefied petroleum gas. And these are some of the earlier cars that they did. Uh, and they were built in about 2001, 2002, and they were all painted blue for the most part. Now the later models of these cars are all painted black, but you still see some of these older cars running around, and they still are in a pretty decent shape, actually. So I'm going to try to keep the weathering on this one pretty clean, uh, consistent to the photos, as I'll show you. Um, uh, Note-wise on the model itself, again, it's an Atherin Genesis car, some of my favorites on the market because they're very high quality, the assembly is really good, printing is really good, paint quality is good, and the detail level is exquisite. And of course, you have the working rotating uh, bearing bearings on the wheels, as you can see. Um, I always really like that, and plus the high level of photo etched piping and all that. Really, really nice. Um, obviously, I've, uh, as I've mentioned before, with weathering the modern tank cars like this, especially with Genesis cars, you have to be very careful with these uh, fine details like the piping and stuff because they're glued in place, yes, but you can wiggle these loose if you uh, are smacking them too much, and it's especially uh, a little more risky on this, being that I hand weather my models with a paintbrush. Uh, it's just good to exercise care when weathering in these areas, especially on the undercarriage of the car uh, where you're going to be around all this piping. So I'll show you that, of course, as we get into it. But like I said, nice model from Atherin, and it'll look really good once it's done. Go ahead and set this in the corner here, though. The things that I've already done to this model that I mentioned, um, it's always good to start off your weathering projects with a good coating of dull coat or a gloss coat on any one of your models, depending on the effect or the finish that you want on the car. Uh, if you're modeling a, a slightly newer car that's in decent shape, you'll want, you'll, you can spray it with a little gloss coat and that'll kind of preserve a little bit of sheen and then at the same time take away some of the extreme sheen so it doesn't look like a factory fresh car, but one that's not too old and has been in service for a few months. Uh, so that's up to kind of your personal preference, however you want to model your particular car or locomotive or whatever. Um, in this particular case, I wanted to model mine since they're from the 2000, uh, early 2000s period. Mine are pretty faded, so what I did was I used uh, some standard uh, dull coat, and this is just a simple tester's dull coat, which I spray out of the can. And uh, just a little note on the dull coat application here. Uh, you want to be a little sensitive of when you're spraying a big model like this, even a smaller model, uh, to be very careful how you apply this, because you want to have a good, even layer of dull coat on your model. You don't want speckles or you don't want uneven coats and you definitely don't want to overspray. Those are the three things you want to avoid. And the best way to get the best results with using dull coat or even clear coat by the way is to take your can of dull coat like this, uh, get a, a tub of warm water going and actually stick your can uh, facing up like this with a and basically place it in the hot water and you don't have to necessarily fill the whole thing up with water just enough that it comes up and maybe covers the can maybe up to here or here you don't necessarily want the can to be floating either you want it to still be standing on its own uh, not floating with by the water and basically that builds up the pressure in the can so when you actually go to spray this stuff you get a lot more even coverage so once you do that take the can out of the water after about five minutes Shake it a few times and then apply it evenly on the car, underbody, top, sides, and ends. I always like to start from the top, um, actually from the top of the car, then hit the bottom, and then hit the top, the ends, and then I do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So that's my procedure for adult coating. It's really no science there. It's just a simple application, and like I said, this makes a great great base for weathering powders, weathering acrylics, anything like that. It's a, always a good base and it uh, basically gives tooth for your uh, weathering finish. And then of course depending on what you do, this is kind of your choice, 
but you can either dull coat it again after the weathering is done. Usually this is what I do, so that way you can seal up all the weathering and it's not going to flake off or anything like that. So that's my uh, dull coat application here. And like I said, I've already went ahead and sprayed this model down with dull coat so it's ready to go. The other thing I did to this model was apply the safety stripes. As you can see, the yellow striping on this, which is the reflective tape that I use, these actually reflect, which is nice. Um, Basically with this, the factory model did not come with these because it's modeled as an early car so the safety stripes weren't in uh, play yet. But basically for my safety stripes, I've mentioned this before, I use Western Safety Reflective Safety Tape, as you can see, right here. You can get this stuff at Harbor Freight Tools for about $10 a roll. It's a really good investment, especially considering the fact that you pretty much have a lifetime supply of tape here. And basically what you do is you cut out the yellow bands only. You're not going to use the black in any way. Uh, you just cut out the yellow bands, and then basically what you do, once you have the band cut out, you can see this is the strip. This one's pretty uh, pretty well used up, but you got a few strips left over here. And basically what you do, take a metal straight edge and a sharp brand new hobby knife blade, and you basically cut long strips out using your straight edge, and you want to keep these as scale length as possible. These are all measured off of prototype photos, so I usually have a standard with my striping so they all are consistent in uh basically shape and size that way you don't have some cars that have large stripes or fat stripes they're all consistent with each other so that's something I like to do basically you cut your bands out you apply them to the model real simple they're not going anywhere once you apply them because of the backing on it which is uh, really sticky they stick really well to the model and especially if you do a dull coating on these cars they stick even better so the, dull, uh, the safety stripes are applied and the cars pretty much where they uh, pretty much ready for weathering at this point. So I'll go ahead and show you some prototype photos and then we'll go ahead and actually start weathering this model. Okay, so take a note of the prototype that we're going to be weathering. This is UTLX 951095, just like the model that I'm going to be weathering. This is the exact car as you can see here, and this is a, a pretty early photo of it, uh, about 2010, something like that. So the safety stripes were not applied at this point. Uh, but for the sake of my road, I went ahead and applied them because eventually this car will probably get safety striping. So there's a few things I want to mention about this particular car. As you, I've, I mentioned, you can see the weathering on this car is very minimal. You can see it's very clean and uh, that's exactly how I'm going to model my car. A few things I want to point out though. Uh, basically what you're dealing with here is a few safety, uh, not only the application of the safety stripes, but also, according to the grime, I see a few things here that I'll point out. For one, I have a little, uh, a few rust spots that I can see, uh, kind of scattered about. I'm going to try to model those, and then you can see a little bit of rust starting at the top of this railing here, around the cage for the hatch. You can see a few rust streaks, just starting at the top, kind of streaking down. That's what I'm going to be trying to focus on with this particular model when I weather it, is these kind of little things right here. But other than that, you can see the top of the car is pretty clean, and the sides are pretty clean. But as we actually concentrate uh, to this area around the trucks and the bolsters, you can see this is where the majority of the grime is going to be. Now, try to ignore that shadowing. It's kind of hard to uh, focus my camera on this computer here. But you can see the kick up from the wheels on the underbody of the car here. You can see that dark shading. This is what we're going to really try to focus on with this particular model. You can see it's very heavy and it's basically sprayed up on the undercarriage of the car and that's what we're going to need to focus on. And then you can see the kick up lines directly fr uh, above the wheels from where the wheels are spraying that grime, dirt and grease from the rails up on the ends of the car. That is also what we're going to be trying to focus on here with this model. As you can see the couplers are nice and grimy so that'll be no big deal to do that. Uh, the trucks are pretty uh, standard, you can see. Uh, we do have a replacement bearing cap here, which is a bright rusty orange, so we will model that on the car as well. Also, as we look at the back end of the car here, you can see we have some uh, fresh stenciling for liquefied petroleum gas. Now, the particular model that I have does not have this, and like I said, this was probably added later on in its life. When the car was built, as you can see, it did not have these stencils. So I will have to add a decal to that and I'll show you that in very, very basically. Um, so that'll be something else we'll have to add. Uh, another little thing um, that I've noticed about this car, you can see the hazmat number is located a little higher than it is on the model and that's okay. Uh, it's kind of assuming too. Like I said, the model is based on an earlier time. At some point in time you can see that they replaced this hazmat number and it was positioned a little higher up on the car towards the end of the car here. And you actually see the patching from where the original hazmat number was. So these are just a few things that I could spot on this car that I'm going to be trying to model on my 
uh, prototype model. So we'll go ahead and get into the weathering and I'll go ahead and show you guys this step by step. Okay, so the basic weathering prep of this model, um, I'm going to be starting from the bottom. So what I've went ahead and done is unscrewed the truck so we can go ahead and remove these and get them off. And this will basically leave us with the entire area around the bolster to be able to model all that kick up and all the grime on the underside of the car. So we'll go ahead and remove the trucks and set these aside. We will reinstall these and weather them later on and we'll show you that here in a little bit. So the car is pretty much ready for weathering at this point and I'll go ahead and show you the uh, materials that we'll be using for this project. So to give you an idea of the materials I'll be using, they're pretty standard to all my other projects. Of course I'll be using my acrylic paints for the majority of the weathering and the colors I always prefer here is a good even mixture of black and earth brown. These are by Anita's Acrylic. You can get these at uh, your craft store like Hobby Lobby for example uh, for a couple bucks. They're uh, pretty inexpensive and they're uh, pretty much last you quite a while so these are always good to have and this is what I'll like I said be using for the majority of the weathering. I also have a little bit of Canyon Orange from Americana Acrylics and this is what we'll be using to model that uh, rusty bearing cap that I showed you a minute ago and now when we get into it later on for the final touches of the weathering we'll be using our chalk pestles as you can see here mainly our earth tones like our rusty brown our bright rust color and maybe even a little black if we need it uh, these will be the primary colors we'll be using from this pestle set also I have some AIM products light rust that I may use here and there uh, for some various effects and I'll show you those in here in a little bit and uh, now for the brushes that I'll be using I'm going to be using a nice combination of brushes here. This fat camel hair brush will be used for the primary weathering. This finer tipped soft bristle brush will be used for truck weathering, uh, painting wheel faces and the axles, uh, for example. This fine tip brush here, as you can see, will be used for doing rust spots and the fine rust streaks and even the kick up on the ends of the car, those kick up lines that I showed you earlier. This is what we use this fine tip brush for. Now this is my chalk weathering brush. This is solely used for chalk pestles and this is what we'll be using later on to hit the trucks, the couplers and certain other areas later on. Also I have a micro, buck, uh, micro brush, excuse me, micro brush applicator for the uh, chalk pestles and the powders later on and also it's good to have a few q-tips on hand uh, in the event that you might need to clean up some excess mess. Also it's good to always have a bowl of fresh water handy that way you can clean your brushes and also to have a good supply of paper towels handy uh, for the cleanup or anything like that and also to clean your brushes after the end of the project. So basically I'm going to apply the stenciling right to this top part of the car above the car data and what I'm going to use is a little diluted white glue with a little water to basically make it um, a slurry sort of uh, kind of something like that uh, basically diluted white glue with water it makes it thinner so and it makes it basically easier to apply that way you're not applying globs of glue to the model so we're going to go ahead and add a little band there pull our decal out of the water and we'll go ahead and slide it onto the model and we're going to position it into place here Oops, <laughs> dropped my Q-tip. All right, and now I'm just gonna basically roll it out like this to basically press the decal against the side of the car to conform to the ribs, or the lines, the seams in between the panels, and also to squeegee out all the excess water and glue. And then kind of clean up the edges here. And you can see the stencil is in place. So basically I'm gonna go ahead and start applying the weathering to the undercarriage of the car. And what I'm going to be using is about a 50-50 mixture of my earth brown and black acrylic to basically do the kick up on the underside of the car. And basically what I'm going to do is brush it on sort of like this, kind of rough, just like the real thing. It's not going to be perfect. And you just basically blotch it on there like this. As you can see, it covers pretty well and just be really really kind of sloppy with it because you got to remember it's going to splatter all over the place on the real cars and you just kind of want to model it like that also be sure to hit the coupler box areas around there and then the kind of the 
this whole area basically. Um, so you can see there's this end. I also hit up the middle of the car around that hatch because you gotta remember a lot of that grime is also gonna get concentrated around this hatch. And then I did the piping. And then here's the other end of the car. I'm already pretty much covered the coupler boxes and what I'm gonna do now is start working that grime onto the ends and the couplers. And then uh, we'll go ahead and start working on some other areas of the car. But as you can see it's coming along pretty well and it's looking pretty good. So now that we've gotten uh, the majority of the undercarriage, what we're going to do is start working that grime up onto the front part of the car and the walkways and the couplers. And remembering prototype photos, this car is still pretty clean. So it's not too heavy on this. And like I said, I'm just going to start with the couplers. I'm just going to give these a good base coat of grime to kind of even out the color. Oops. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to hit these up. And then now what I'll do... Just kind of just concentrate and just kind of dry brush some of that grime up onto the walkway like this. Very lightly. And just work it up. See, very gently. You want to be very careful of all this, all these detail parts here. These guys right here because you don't want to damage those. Those will break really easily. So like I said, just very, very gently go over these parts. And then... You can kind of go down, if we can get it in focus here, the side of the car around these uh, stirrups. Just a little bit of grime on those, and then kind of work it down the handrails like this. Just very gently though. I'm going to also hit this ladder here. Just very lightly though. Just to kind of give it a little more uh, kind of depth in grime. Remember, this is going to be a high traffic area. People climbing on and off this hatch. So you're going to see a lot more paint chipping and then that leads to the rust and corrosion. So this is always a good place to kind of concentrate that. Especially at the very base of the ladder too. So again, the concentration of that grime on these railings is always going to be around this this area here around the bolsters where the majority of the kickups going to be so try to focus on that as much as you can so it's looking pretty good so now we'll model the kickup on the ends using our fine tip brush yeah I remember this guy and then we're going to take our earth brown and our black again and we're going to basically model the kickup at the ends of the car and what I like to do is I like to take the truck, we're not going to reinstall it, but we're just going to place it underneath. That way we can kind of get guidance to where the wheels are going to be. That way we can kind of render where the, the spray is going to be on this car. And if I can get this on the bolster, wants to be a little tricky here. There we go. Then we can actually model it. So I'm just going to go ahead and start at the very, very bottom and just start kind of working it up. Get a little more paint. So that's basically the kick up you can see. Like I said the concentration of the grime is going to be at the very base and then it streaks up the end of the tank car there. So that came out pretty good. Go ahead and show you the other end here real quick. So that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and start working on the trucks then at this point in time. So for the weathering on the wheels I'm going to use my earth brown mixture again and I'm just going to go ahead and blotch it on here, just like this, hitting pretty much all the angles of the truck itself. And then what we're going to do, well, actually before we do anything else, we're going to clean this little bit up here. And then we're going to take our flat soft bristle brush like this, and we're going to take our earth brown directly unmixed and we're going to just start going around the wheels like this just like this and basically we're going to do that with both wheels and I'm going to do it on the inside and outside. And I'm going to paint the axles too. 
And then uh, once the really the final part of the weathering is done, then we'll go ahead and go over with the chalk pestles and basically highlight all of this, which will look really nice. So I'll come back here in a few minutes and show you guys the results. Now I'm just going to add a small amount of basically a rust orange color um, to do the rusty bearing cap on the side of the car, if you remember that. As you can see, the truck's looking pretty good so far. Wheels are all weathered. And now we're going to go ahead and add that little bit of rust to it, just very carefully. Just like this. Okay, so with the light turned off, you can kind of see a little, a little more detail. The weathering that we did on the truck, you can see the bright orange bearing cap for the replacement. And you can see the wheels are nicely weathered, a nice subtle grime color with those rusty wheels. It really blends perfectly in with the car and as we turn the car to the side here you can see how nice that looks. And you can actually see also I went around the very rim of the wheel, or basically the flange of the wheel, and put a little more of that orange on it to also represent kind of more of a, more of a fresh rust color for a brand new wheel there, so that looks pretty good. So now to finish up these wheels, I'm going to go ahead and take out my chalk pestles and I'm just going to take a little bit of my uh, kind of earthy rust tone and I'm just going to go over these areas on the truck, mainly around the springs uh, to kind of give it some discoloration to kind of make things look a little different. You can see right away it's an almost instantaneous difference and we're just going to kind of blend that out a little bit uh, for a little more subtle look. Hit this bearing cap here a little bit with some fresh rust. And uh, you can really go into as much detail as you want with these. You could even go back and add some white highlights to these with either some white powders or even white acrylics that you can dry brush. Uh, it's totally up to you. In this particular case, I'm going pretty easy on these trucks because according to the photos, they're still pretty clean. So I'm just going to go uh, relatively easily on these. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead. Uh, while we have our chalk pestles, we're going to hit the couplers and we're going to hit uh, some other little areas like the kick-up spray on the ends here to kind of enhance them a little bit further. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of bright rust chalk now and I'm just going to kind of go over the coupler just very very gently. Uh, you don't want to hit these too hard because you can take the springs off especially on KDs but just enough that you can kind of get a light dusty effect on the on the couplers to represent some fresh rust uh, but very lightly on these though as you can see it looks a lot better already and now I'm going to switch to a rather fine brush here and I'm basically going to apply some earth brown to my kick up spray here. Alright, so the model's really coming along at this point. It's really looking good. And now, what we're going to do to pretty much start wrapping the project up is we're going to start doing the fine detail weathering with our fine tip brush here, like rust streaks and rust spots, for example. Now, if you recall in the photos, we have a rust spot right here. We have some streaking up on these railings here, and we have a few more rust spots right around here around the ladder. So we're going to go ahead and start working on these, and I'm going to go ahead and start applying the rust spots first. In this little corner here, I'm just going to take a little of my earth brown, and I'm just going to apply it right here, just in this little spot here. We're going to let that sit for a little bit, and we're also going to add the rust spots here. Just very tiny ones. I'm kind of eyeballing these right now. You can see. And then there's one more all the way, as it looks like, all the way up here. And then now what we can do is we can start streaking these down a little bit. Uh, very, very softly, though. You'll see here. Just like that. You can also do this with a fanning technique with a soft bristle brush to streak it down, but in this particular case, since I'm using more of a heavier, kind of a heavier layer of paint on these, what you'll end up doing is just streaking a huge blob of paint down the side of the car, which will look kind of unrealistic. So I like to do it by hand because it'll make it look a little more realistic. And then finally, this little guy up here. Streak it down, just streak it down. So it looks pretty good. Now I'll do the uh, rest around the top cage here. There's a little bit kind of right top here around this railing, and then one right here around this uh, rail. 
and then it kind of streaks down like this. I'm just gonna streak it down just like that. Get a better view here so you guys can see this a little better. You can see that rust. So that's looking pretty good. And now we got one more little area to hit here. And it's this right here. Go ahead and wrap it all the way around. Kind of like that. And I'm going to add a little more, just a few little random spots right around these seams here just for fun. While we're over here. And we'll go ahead and streak this one down. Nice and soft like this. You can see. So that's looking pretty good. And then, to kind of finish up these rust spots, I like to add a little more depth to them. So what I'm going to do is take a little of my black and mix it in with the earth brown to kind of create a more darker shade. And what I'm going to do is go into the center of these rust spots with that paint to kind of look like more of a, a pitted area like this, you'll see. You see how that looks? Do it up here. Up here. Get a little more paint here for these final rust spots. And we'll just hit them up like this. Can't forget the little guy up here. Just a little bit at the top there. So that's looking pretty good. Got a few rust spots on there now. It's really starting to look good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let these set up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and work around the perimeter of the car and add a few other little rust spots. And then I'll follow behind with some chalk pestles and powders and we'll go ahead and go over some of these little areas to kind of enhance some of the rust effects. So now we'll go ahead and start enhancing some of these areas at the top of the railings here. Particularly on the ladder cages right here or on the walkways too. We're just going to give it a little bit of road grain to kind of darken those down a little bit. Just like this. Get a little more paint. We'll hit the other one real quick. Not going too heavily on these. I still want to keep them relatively clean. Hit the tops of these handrails just a little bit. Not too much though. They're still pretty clean too. I'll do the other sides of these later on too, uh, when we get to this side, or when I get to this side. And now what I'm going to do is take a little bit of my paint what's left on the brush and just kind of start working and concentrating around this hatch here there's going to be a little corrosion to kind of get a little more effect there down here too you can see that's really starting to look good though I'm just going to keep working it around the hatch here and I'll show you the end results here in a minute Alright, so the last thing I'm going to do with these little rusty areas is I'm going to follow behind with our powders and I'm going to use my micro brush and just pick up a little bit of the powders and I'm just going to go over the areas around these just at the very top to kind of enhance them and make it look like more of a fresh rust color and then just kind of streak the powders down like this and it kind of creates like a shadow effect also uh, which looks pretty good and a little of this powder goes a long way too by the way it really works wonders on this stuff and you can see how well it enhances the rust just that little bit here this is basically what I'm going to be doing to finish up the model I'm just going to be going over these rust spots and stuff like that uh, to model that now for a cluster of rust spots like this I want to model more of a halo around those what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of earth brown with my uh, chalk pestles and my soft brush here I'm just going to go and kind of halo those like this a little bit just to kind of create an area that looks like a, more of a fresh patchy rust color. You can see the instantaneous difference right there. That looks pretty good. And I'm basically just going to go over and add little halos to these rust spots like this. Now 
I'm actually going to take a little bit of earth now and I'm going to kind of streak some from the top of the hatch down the side of the car like this just for a little added variety so sort of like this I'm kind of concentrating this around the top of the hatch where all that rust is going to be too that's why I'm kind of trying to do this so it's looking pretty good So here is the car as of now. As you can see, it's looking pretty good. We got all the rust spots enhanced. They're all painted on there and they look pretty good. All the wheels and all that are done. The undercarriage is done. Uh, we got the stenciling done. The hatch area is done too. I went ahead and touched all that up with the pestles and stuff like that as well to kind of enhance all those details up there. Finish the railing work as well. The ends are done and quite frankly I think it's looking pretty good here's the other side now you can see I didn't really go too crazy with this side either I just kind of again concentrated that rust and grime around the top of the railing streaked it down a little bit and then you got a few rust spots as well so you can see this tank car looks very very good and I'm very happy with how it turned out so as you can see we have the completed car 951095 is officially done and it looks great. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys can learn a few things with this and uh, helping you guys develop your own techniques for weathering. Um, this is pretty much how I always weather my cars and prototype photos like I said are always the way to go. If you can get them, use them and they are extremely helpful when accurately rendering a model like this. Uh, to take a car like this right out of the box, shiny and fresh and glossy and to weather it and make it look like something out of the real world it's just amazing to me and I never get tired of the uh, never get tired of it honestly so hopefully this uh, video was helpful to you I'll have some more weathering videos coming out soon but uh, for now this pretty much covers it guys like I said if you have any questions feel free to comment message me on Facebook any way you want uh, my Facebook is Dan's Custom Trains uh, Daniel Arnold, you can look me up there. You can message me with any questions you have uh, concerning this video or any other th anything else. So uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching and take care as always.